No, because you deep down you don't want them to run over you. Deep down you do feel the way, but you're just afraid to say. You're like, I don't know how to do it. What I did was realize that that's my inner child speaking to me. She's terrified right now. And so I've learned to separate my higher self from her. And so I'm like parenting her. It's my, my higher self or my adult self. I'm like, it's okay. You can speak up now. And if they go off on you, that's info for you. And you know you ain't did nothing wrong. And it's like, okay, fuck them then because they crazy. I don't want to be around them. They're unsafe. Excuse me, can I please talk to you for a minute? Hey, girlfriends, it's your girl, Mindset and Intuitive Coach, Kendall D. Back with another The Hey Girlfriend podcast. So, today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things that I learned on my healing journey. And on my, I guess, reparenting my inner child journey. Was learning how to be fucking assertive. Like, I love just being assertive. It's like, when I said assertive, I sit up straight in my chair because it's like, to, for me, it's how I've learned to protect me, but without being defensive or without being guarded, if that makes sense. Because... You can be assertive without being rude. You can be assertive without being mean, being a bitch. You can be assertive, you know, and I I feel like it's just so important that we have that trait. So, I didn't look up what assertive means, but I want to give the meaning of it. So, a quick Google search, it comes up as... Having or showing a confident and forceful personality. I don't like that word forceful with it. But I guess in a sense it is. I guess in a sense it makes sense. <laughs> I guess in a sense it makes sense. It's. I look at it more as like an ability to speak up for yourself. In a way that is honest and respectful. I, looked, I just seen that and I like that. And... Yeah, it's the ability to speak up for ourselves in a way that is honest and respectful. I love that. It's just... Let me get into it because I want to teach y'all how to be more assertive. Not just in dating, but in life. Like, it's the most favorite thing in the world that I've learned to do. And... I guess I give a short story on why it's my favorite thing. Because it's like, I feel like... I learned to finally have my own back. It's like I've learned to not let people run over me and not to be a doormat, not to be a people pleaser. And it's like, this may sound, (laughs) this may sound a little, um, I don't want to say toxic. I don't think it sounds toxic, but this may sound a little crazy to you. Take it how you want But I really love it because I like seeing people change their attitude towards me instantly. Not every time that happens. Sometimes people are just going to be disrespectful and don't give a damn. But when in the times when someone thought they had you, but you come through with the intelligence and the assertiveness and you're being respectful with it and you're being what I like to call or what my mom used to like to call it, what she still calls it, is nice nasty. I don't know if you ever heard that, but it's like, she's like, you don't have to cuss nobody out. You don't have to talk crazy to nobody to get your point across. I'm going to get my point across, and I'm going to just put you in your place very nice, nasty. That's how my mama used to always say it. <laughs> like, that's one of the things that she taught me that it, it's just that it was hard for us to learn how to implement that because she didn't know how to parent that in us. I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, (laughs) yeah, so I've implemented that. It's like you 
can be assertive and speak up about how you feel about something that someone said to you or did to you or how you feel about anything in general. But you can do it in a way to where you're owning your feelings and you're being honest about what you feel and you also are being respectful towards the other person. Even if they're being a little disrespectful or even if you perceived it to be disrespectful, that doesn't mean you have to return it being that way. You can ask questions or get curious about what they meant by that. And so you can say, hey, that kind of hurt my feelings. What did you mean by that? Say it something like that. I'll give a quick example. Well, actually, no. The example, I don't want to get too far off topic because this may be a little bit of a long one because I got a four-minute video I want to play for you that I that kind of got me to talking about this. Um, but check out my bonus episode on my Patreon. I talk about what happened at work today and what how I tested my assertiveness and how I was like, yeah, I felt good about it. So that's another story. That's for that's on that. That's already posted. So now that we know what assertiveness means and we talked about the the Google dictionary version that popped up, the Oxford Languages Dictionary def, definition, and then just like a more I don't know, a, a, a better meaning that I like. <laughs> and I don't consider a assertiveness to be in negative in all. So it's just being confident. It's assertive, not aggressive. That's what it is. You've been assertive, not aggressive with it. Okay, so we got that out of the way. I want to play this video in total, in totality, in, to, in totality. <laughs> is that how you say that? I know the word I'm trying to say. I sh yeah, I'm trying. I want to play the video totally out, completely out. The whole four, it's almost four minutes. And I was thinking like maybe I can cut some pieces out, but like no, I want to play the whole entire thing. I'll preference what it's about. So it's basically this guest was on um, the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne the God's podcast, and so he talked about. Letting your children, quote unquote, disrespect you or what it means for that and how it means to raise children that are more confident. And then what I want, want to add is more assertive. I don't think he really quite said assertive, but the words he used describing how you want to raise your kids to be strong, confident, that's what I would take it as. So let me play. I'm going to be quiet and shut up and let me play <laughs> the video for you okay listen very very close i'm going to put my phone up to the mic so you can hear what he's saying <sighs> excuse me you, you you told me the other day that you feel like kids sh should disrespect their parents i think kids i think parents you should expect <laughs> I, 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 I'm a, <laughs> jason let me let me put that in context how many of you guys in this room are, would like to raise your children to be strong-minded independent thinking ambitious kids or adults right mm -hmm. Well, if you are going to instill that, part of that is confidence, part of that is voice, part of that is knowing I have value. And when you're teaching your child that, and I'm talking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the first place they practice voice is on you guys. Correct. That's the first place. So you might say to them something, and I'm going to tell you something. My mother, I had two brothers, my mother would say, Ellie, go do the dishes. And I would be like, why didn't you ask one of them? And that would get me popped. You know, that would get you looked That's at. That popped, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But if you're teaching your child to be confident, to be strong, to be to value their voice, they should ask those kinds of questions, and it allows you to parent them. But we shouldn't uh, translate that as disrespect. They're just practicing. That's not disrespect. They're like, practicing we, their voice. But that was in our era. Bro, in the 1900s, yeah, that was, that was yeah, disrespect. Yeah, I would never yeah. think to talk back. I would never even think to talk to my parents the way my kids talk to me. But it's like it's not. It's, as Ellie said, it's not disrespect. It's just them being like asking valid questions. But that's right. also the way white people raise their kids doing that. Yeah. Because like my grandmother, you could never it, she'd tell you whatever to do, paint the house, just go paint it. You don't paint the house. We confuse respect for silence, and I think that's a problem. I think we have mm -hmm. to allow our well, children. Found on that? We well, we if if I say go paint the house, and the child says yes, ma'am, and goes paint, we think, oh, that's such a respectful child. But that same child. If some strong-willed 17-year-old kid in high school says, let's go skip school, they're going to say, yes, sir. Like, we have to teach them 
to question why am I painting the house? I should understand the context of the life that I live in. Mm. Why am I painting the house? For these reasons. Okay, now it makes sense to me. And I understand and I can do things that I understand and push back on things that's, I don't. That's why white folks got kids on leashes in the malls. Cause like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, you I, run I, free, do you know? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with you with that, Elliot, because is, and this is going to sound crazy. All right, right, here we go. I got six kids. So if I tell one of my kids to do something, yep. I expect it to be done. I'm yep. not going to do it with something that's going to be detrimental to their health, something that's going to hurt them. It's part of, of of what everybody needs to do to be in this household. I agree with you. Meaning if if if, if dad's chores or, or dad's way is to make the money, pay the bills, do this, that, and the other, and I ask you to shovel the snow, don't ask me why. Don't say, well, why didn't you ask this, this, this you know, sibling? Why didn't you ask... This one, no, because I asked you to do it. But you could explain it to them just the way you explained it. Just envy, yeah. envy. Listen, you I shouldn't have to, like, because now you know, you're watching. Because when you say, when you say, "Hey, Dad, I want to play basketball," and cleats cost five hundred dollars, I don't say. Well, they're cheaper cleats. I'm like, oh, your grades are good. Okay, I got you those cleats. I but you should have that conversation on both ends of the spectrum, though. Now, I agree with you. If, if I say to my child, "Go do this." You want them to go and do it. Now, I ain't gonna say paint the house. Like paint but, the house a little far. But, 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 but why that's a really good example is to a, chi a child, they have thought without wisdom. Mm -hmm. So you might ask the child to mow the lawn, but in their child brain, you ask me to paint the house. It's not, you have to help me understand the world in which I live. And I think it's both ends of the spectrum. If the child says, I want to play basketball and it, I need $600 Jordans, I, I don't think it's enough to just say, oh, you got good grades. I, I, you want to sit them down and explain to them, like, this $600 is hard to earn. That's right. And you are worth it. Mm -hmm. And then that child thinks they have value, and that child understands the world in which they live. But remember, guys, like, they get confidence, they get thought, they get spontaneity before they get wisdom. And so, that's it. That, that... That was deep for me. It's like, I teared up a little bit at the end when he said, you won't, you know, you're trying to let them know that they are valued. And it's like, listening to that whole thing, y'all, I was like, if I would have got that, even a little small piece of that growing up, how different my life would have been. How different I would be now. I wouldn't had to have struggled with being assertive being walked all over, being led astray in these toxic relationships because I was afraid to have a voice and more so focused on being chosen. So many things would have been different for me. And I'm not one to say I have any regrets or one to say I wish my life had gone different necessarily. It went the way it was supposed to go because if you want to get really deep, deep with it, they say that we choose our parents. Like, in the beginning, before we're even born, our souls choose which household and parents we want to go to. That's another story. Not one that I'll ever talk about in this podcast. But look it up. It's really deep. Really deep shit. I got lost on TikTok one day. And I was like, my mind blown. I was like, whoa. So, it makes sense, though, because I wouldn't be doing this work I'm doing now. I wouldn't be helping so many others. I, I, the challenges I went through growing up... The growth that I had to experience, repairing to myself, unlearning, and even so, in so many words, I feel like I kind of parent my mom in a sense because of all that I've learned. And I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with that. But let's get back into being assertive, y'all. I want to talk about being assertive and dating. And how what he stated is that, you know, I, the kid that the strong will kid that says, let's skip school. And you're like, OK, because the kid did not know how to speak up for themselves or was always taught that that was disrespectful. Didn't know how to think for themselves or was whatever they thought for themselves was made to, you know, change their mind about it. Because what the guy was saying, it was so right. He was like, children have thought without wisdom. And that struck out to me, stuck out to me because. He's so right. Like, I think about how my mind, you know, wondered about things growing up as a child. I had a lot of thoughts, but I just didn't have the wisdom to understand those thoughts. And so I made them mean whatever I thought they were supposed to mean, if that makes sense. And a lot of us, I feel like, do that. A lot of us do not know how to be assertive because we were taught that it's disrespectful we were taught that talking back or asking questions for clarity 
was disrespectful. And not only was we taught that it was disrespectful, we were met with hostility. We were met with maybe getting yelled at or getting whooped or getting popped or being punished. You know, we were met with all of that disdain from just doing something as simple as asking a question because our parents took it the wrong way, took it personally that, oh, they trying to talk back. They trying to cross me. They trying to, you know, you know, that's that's how their our parents are probably taught. And so think about it. As a child, you've learned that that's what that means. And so as a child, you've taken what you think that means. You've taken all of that and you've kind of bottled it up. And you've learned that, oh, I can't ever do that. I can't ever really have my own mind. I can't ever really speak up because I'm afraid of what's going to happen if I do. I don't like that feeling. Your nervous system is shot and doesn't want that feeling to ever happen again. So you put that up. You put that little voice up. You don't say shit else. You just do it. Whether you're mad and you hold in the mad feelings, the crying feelings. I remember so many times I held in how I really felt a lot of the times. And because I couldn't question it, I couldn't speak on it. Um, it's just so much that happened to me that I could. I felt like I could never really come to my parents and speak on it, or if I questioned something, I couldn't do it. It's like I was just silenced, and I really feel like that's why I'm kind of a loner now, and why I'm quote unquote quiet. I'm not that quiet, but I I have grown to not be that quiet. I've learned how to use my voice, but I mean like just I I use a lot of alone time. I'm not quiet. I'm quiet when I'm first meeting people because I'm feeling them out. Almost like I'm making sure they're safe. I know how to be assertive when need be, but in the beginning when I'm meeting you, I'm quiet as a mouse because I'm just filling you out to see if you are the type of safe person that I can speak up to, that I can be around, that I can talk to. I'm trying to see if you're safe. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but yeah. But a lot of the times, you know, everyone growing up was like, oh, she's so quiet. Oh, she's so dismal. Oh, Kendall be in her own world. This is me when I was a kid. And I'm like, cuz, I have no other choice. I can't, I have no other choice. I'm a, I am wasn't, Pi- I was a Pisces growing up. I'm a Pisces child. I was always very emotional. I was always silent. So maybe I think, cause I had two other sisters and I feel like that they took that differently than I did. We all have our, um, trauma from not being able to be assertive with our parents. Excuse me, y'all. Um, but yeah, so being assertive in dating, if you are afraid of what is going to happen when you speak up, you're going to do that when dating. You're going to be afraid that you're going to run a guy off. You're going you're gonna to be afraid that he may go off on you. You know, you're going to be just have this fear around it, period, when dating. And so what ends up happening is that you end up in situations that are not only low quality, but situations that are detrimental to your mental health, maybe even your physical health, because you don't really know how to speak up for yourself. You don't know how to be confident because you had it stripped away from you. And so, essentially, it's not really you that is afraid to be assertive. It's not the adult you. It's not the grown-up you. It's your inner child that is really afraid to speak up and be assertive. Your inner child is like, oh, no, no, no. I remember. No, we can't do that. Remember you did it to your mom and you got your ass whooped? Remember that time you did it and your mom went ballistic on you? Remember when you're, you know, you, your nervous system remembers this shit. It remembers it. And it's like, no, I'm scared. It's just like, it's okay. It's just like PTSD almost. Just like say if you nearly drowned in a pool, you're going to be afraid of water for a long time. I mean, some may not, some may just get over it. Eventually you will, but you're going to be afraid. Just like, okay, here's a a easier example. (laughs) It's kind of funny, (laughs) but it it goes with this to help you kind of understand it. Like I remember, um, once I had Chinese food, you know, I love Chinese food. And so I was eating it. And then the next thing I know, I had a stomach virus. Now, I don't know if the Chinese food gave me a stomach virus or not. It probably didn't because my guy I was seeing at the time, my ex, he didn't get a stomach virus from it. He ended up getting it a day or two after me because, you know, it's it, it it passes along like that. 
So it was probably just a stomach bug and just whatever I had ate that day made me throw it up. But no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't eat Chinese food for a long time because I was scared of getting sick. I was scared. My, my body, I remembered that. I remember that feeling. I didn't want it to happen again. So that was my way of preventing it. And it was probably a little illogical and even irrational. But j- j- your body and brain is not caring about that. It's like, no, nope, nope, we're not doing it. Nope, nope, nope. You know? And so it took me a long time to finally start back eating Chinese food to where I felt like it was safe enough. So I had to kind of build my courage up to that. So that's just an example of what I'm saying. It's like you are not going to be assertive in life, in dating especially, if you were taught that that's wrong and that's disrespectful and that's mean or you didn't know how to use your voice. And so the way that I learned to start using my voice more and the way that you can is remembering that you are an adult now. So whatever happens from you being assertive, you, the adult you, can handle it. You have more control now than you did when you was a child. You have to remember that. And that's what I started telling myself in situations where I would get nervous. Like, practice it. I would get nervous, clam up, be like, oh my God, it's time for me to speak up for myself. And I'm like, oh my God, what is going to happen? What if I do? What if I do? What if, you know, oh, if I do speak up, they may do that. You know, that's that's exactly how I feel. That's what's going in my head and my stomach. I'm getting butterflies. I'm nervous as shit. It's time to speak up for myself. Oh, you know, because you, deep down, you don't want them to run over you. Deep down, you do feel the way, but you're just afraid to say. You're like, I don't know how to do it. What I did was realize that that's my inner child speaking to me. She's terrified right now. And so I've learned to separate my higher self from her. And so I'm like parenting her. It's my, my higher self or my adult self. I'm like, it's okay. You can speak up now. And if they go off on you, that's info for you. And you know you ain't did nothing wrong. And it's like, okay, fuck them then. Because they crazy. I don't want to be around them. They're unsafe. That's how you look at that. And so it takes time. But you have to start realizing in situations like that, who's running the show? It's the inner child. Even when the, you get in these toxic relationships or you get in these bad relationships that not, aren't really for you. Your inner child is running it because she's trying to basically duplicate her childhood. That's really what it is about. It's like how whatever you're used to, that's what you th- think is safe. So you've gotten comfortable with being with operating that way. You think that that's the way. You don't know any other way. That's safe to you. And so you find yourself in relationships like that. And you find yourself not being able to speak up for yourself. Like in both of my toxic relationships, I felt I couldn't speak up for myself. I felt anything could just go. Uh, Or when I did speak up for myself, of course it was met with them going off on me. And in my head, I'll be like, yep, that's, that's about right. That's how it pretty much goes. Because that's how I with my parents. You know, it was kind of like that too. And sometimes I may have found myself kind of blaming myself. You know, you may find yourself in all kinds of things like they're confused about it. Because you've never been able to do it safely and know how it feels. And so if you've never been able to be assertive safely, be confident safely, you are going to shy away from doing it and do the opposite because you think that it's wrong. And so... I started practicing more in my everyday life, being assertive, speaking up, and kind of honoring what I feel. And I feel ultimately what really kind of helped me get there was my relationship that I'm in now. I was doing a little work on my own with being assertive and learning that, okay, you know, those people are not safe. And if someone's not safe, you should not be around them it's not even about being assertive it's a it's about being like you're unsafe to me you are a loose cannon and you can't handle a boundary you can't handle my assertiveness you can't handle me being confident about how I feel without taking it personal you can't handle it so it's just like my parents they were unsafe and you have to come to that realization that maybe they were wrong maybe they raised you the best they could but they were wrong 
And it's so when you come to that realization, you start looking at life different. You start reparenting, reparenting yourself the way that they should have in a sense. That's what reparenting essentially is. And so back to what I was saying about being in my current relationship, I feel like that that's what really, really helped me to really put like the button on being assertive. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So, I wouldn't say I had to be assertive with him. I did at one point. Well, actually, yeah. I said this point before. And some of you mentioned it. Especially ones I coach. Y'all have mentioned it. Y'all remember me saying this. So, I'll say it again. For those that maybe just tuning in never heard this story. But with my now husband, when we were dating, I remember uh, we were going to a party. He told me, this is like the third date in the week. He was like, so you want to um, go to this party my friends and I are having at a house party. I was like, yeah, sure. You know, meeting his friends. Okay, sure. So he didn't have a car at the time. So he was riding with a friend. And he was like, I can have my friend drop me off at your house and we go to the party together. Granted, now, this is the third date. We've only been on two. This In the third date, I think we went on three dates in a week. Like, it was just like back to back. I know, it may have been a week, week and a half. I know it was back to back. It was no weeks in between or or nothing like that. And we met online. We met on Tinder. So, you know, I didn't really know him well. And I have learned to not move too fast with people. And plus, I wasn't romanticizing him because I didn't. he didn't present himself to be that way, to be someone that you romanticize, if that makes sense. But anyway... When he said that, he texted me that, I was like, nervous. Because I'm like, in my head, I start thinking, I don't want to, you know, I want to I wanna say no, but I'm afraid to say no. I want to just meet him there because I don't feel comfortable com- coming to my house yet. I don't think that's the right thing to do. You know, I was overthinking it, playing around in my head. And then I stopped myself and I said, this is the time for you to see if he can respect your boundaries and if he is the type of guy he's portraying to be, which was a good guy up to that point. And I learned to look at them more, look at guys that I date more so in the now and the reality and the present moment than thinking about how I want them to be my man one day or be my husband or thinking about the future with them. I, I had stopped doing it and I was just present with it. I was learning to do that because not because I'm just like, oh, I'm the best at dating and I know how to get, I got this. It was me almost practicing because I'm like, I have been hurt too many goddamn times romanticizing these men. Let me stop. Take my damn time. I don't, and start saying, I don't know how it's going to go. I like you so far. Let's see. So <laughs> I was on that. But anyway, I finally built up the courage and I was like, I texted him. I was like, hey. I'm not comfortable with you coming here yet, yet, so I will just meet you at the party. And I said something like that. I may have said if that's okay, or I don't remember. I'm just being honest. It wasn't like straight up no. It wasn't, I know it wasn't just straight up no. It was a little explaining, but it was me setting a boundary saying, I'm not comfortable with that, you meeting here. I'd rather meet there. We just meet at the party. Something like that. I know I said something definitely like that. And... I was nervous waiting on the response. I was like, what if he gets mad? What, you know, this is, y'all, this is, do you see the repeated, re- repeated version of my inner child of what she was afraid to speak up and about things that she really wanted to do for herself and really needed to know for herself and really wanted for herself is carrying over. I was in my late twenties afraid to speak to fuck up about what I needed, what I felt right about, what my intuition was telling me, afraid, but I did it scared anyway. And so I did it and he was like, okay, that's cool. We could just meet at the party. And I was like, that's, that's it. I took a deep breath. Like, Oh, like, okay. I was like, I did it. I got that out the way. I was so happy. And I was like, okay. And that was really just like, uh, 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 that, that's how that works. That was my first taste of assertiveness and boundaries and not getting a negative response from it and actually seeing it in work. And I was like, okay. So you see how you have to kind of practice it a little and practice it in certain situations to see the good response you can get it. For your nervous system to realize, okay, it's safe. 
There's going to be some unsafe moments, but I'm an adult. I know how to handle those unsafe moments when they do arrive. I know how to remove myself and look at it. It's like, I know that I'm being confident and respectful right now. You are on some other shit. You crazy. <laughs> and, and I'm going to remove myself. I see what, you know, this is information for me. And I see that this is not conducive to the type of relationships and connections I want in my life. I see now how you operate. You know, you look at it that way. Not as a way of like, I was wrong to say something. No, you weren't wrong. You were not wrong to say something. You are right to speak up about how you feel about something and speak up for yourself. Like, I love speaking up for myself now. I love it. And I know I don't do it in a way to where I'm demanding. I'm just like, I'm going to speak up for myself in every connection. No matter who it is, I'm speaking up for my damn self. Because my inner child deserves it. She's rooting for me. She is happy that we can do this now. She's happy to have her voice now. She, You know, I'm doing it for us. And so, moving on into the relationship with my husband now. When we were dating, I'll admit, a lot of a lot of things, I had a lot of passive aggressiveness still because I was afraid to speak up about my feelings. I was still afraid of some rebuttal. Like I said, you can practice it, but that doesn't mean you're going to get it right every single time because this is a deep wound. This is something you're really trying to unlearn. It's a lot to unlearn. Years and years of childhood trauma because our childhood years are our most impressionable years whatever happens during that time it's going to stick with you so imagine trying to undo all that and i'm in my first healthy relationship and i'm just crying don't know how to be assertive because i'm afraid to i'm afraid to say how i feel afraid it's not going to be heard all of that i talk a lot more about this on i believe sis sometimes we're the problem that episode check that out i forget what number one of the earlier ones not earlier ones, but yeah, look up, look up sis sometimes with a problem. And I talk about my issue and my problems I had in the beginning of my healthy relationship and how I resolved them. But being in this healthy relationship, it definitely was a wake up call to a lot of trauma I had going on a lot. And it helped me grow. He was like healthy. Of course, he didn't have a perfect childhood, but he was generally very healthy and had and understood how to express himself in a healthy manner for the most part. He have his own little things, but he he was generally a healthy person, different than what I've ever had, and just different. <laughs> and so I finally saw how crying and doing all that shit and going off because I'm afraid to really be real and honest about how I feel and what I need wasn't working. It was just hurting him, and seeing him hurt made me like, okay. Let me just say how I really feel. So I started being more assertive about what I need, what I want. And he just always obliged. He was always like, okay, it was no problem. and Or it wasn't sometimes about him having to change something. Sometimes it would be simple as him listening and said, okay, I understand how that could have made you feel that way. You know, I'll do better. Or he'll be like, you know, or if we just have a, a talk. I don't like in conversations for someone to tell me you're right. I don't know if that's I don't know what that is with me, but because I'm not I'm not trying to be a know it all. I'm not trying to be right. And I just tell him that. Like I'm not trying to be right here. What I'm trying to do is just tell you how I feel about something and how it makes me feel. It's not about me being right. It's just about us coming to a mutual understanding. That's all it is. I don't want to be right about something. Like, yeah, you right. I mean, every now and then, if if something, yeah, if I make a point about something, okay, you're right. But generally, that's not my goal. And I don't want people to think that that's my goal well, with him. And so, yeah, this healthy space really helped me to really build on the assertiveness that I was already working on. And so now I see me implemented it in my everyday life, even at work. And that I love to see in work and in action because it's like I remember how the old me would have been and just kind of either let shit hurt my feelings and not said anything or just you know let them take the lead or let them kind of walk over me because a lot of times people don't realize that they're walking over you it's not like they're deliberately trying to walk over you sometimes 
Sometimes it's just that some people are so strong-willed that you can't get a word in edgewise. But I've learned to kind of like jump in there and speak on it, but in a calm way. And so I'm trying to think of any other examples in my personal life how I was assertive. Um, I can't really think of any on top of my head. And plus, I don't want to make this too long and drawn out. You get it. Um, I'll talk a little more about it on my Patreon as well anyway. But yeah. I want you to know that being assertive in life, just in general, it feels good. It feels damn good. It feels great. And I feel like you deserve to be there to get to that place. I know it's scary because you're not used to it. But try a little bit. Try a little bit. Try Practice. Practice builds confidence. Not just being scared and shying away from something that you know can better your life. Practice makes the confidence. So start small. Start on maybe, okay, someone you work with. Or start on that relative that's always kind of being pushy and telling you what you're going to do. And you just being like, well, no, hold on. You can ask me if I would like to do that. Something like that. That's actually a good example. You know, instead of someone, some, sometimes people, it's someone in my life. That can be pushy or bossy, but I know that they don't mean any harm. I know they don't because I know them. Now, if it's somebody off the street, you don't know them. So I'm not saying you have to be that understanding to where you don't say anything, but I've learned to be like, you know what? Speak up anyway and just be like, well, hey, I'll see or you can ask me that, you know, you don't have to demand it. And I'll see what I can do. Something like that. You know, that's being assertive. You're not saying, um, excuse me, who you think you're talking to? That's not being assertive. That's being aggressive. So assertive is, you you know, okay, it's okay you want that, but you can't ask me. You know, you get what I'm saying? It, that's the difference between aggressive and assertiveness. Aggressiveness will just not get you anywhere in life. It's going to make you a mean girl. And it's going to put you back further. And it's not it's not going to be conducive to what you're trying to do with your life. You not, we're not going to be a mean girl. Okay? I want you all to know that there's a difference between being assertive and aggressive. Don't be out here being aggressive. And if you feel like you are aggressive, I want you to process that. I want you to look into that because it could be the same reason. You're afraid to be assertive because you're afraid of being walked over. So instead of you taking the route of being assertive and realizing you can get your point across in a respectful, calm manner, you decide to jump straight to anger because that's you covering up your feelings that you really feel and you're rather just be aggressive and like, let me show them who they got messed up. They're not finna do this to me. You know, you think that that's a better way to get your point across. And you're like, okay, they, you know, because you're covering up the really vulnerable feelings that you're feeling. And you're just rather be aggressive. So it's really the same thing when you think about it. Uh, to me, I've always said, and I've actually heard therapists say this, that anger is really covering up hurt feelings. So if you feel like you have to be angry and aggressive and demanding, it's because you're afraid to ask. Because maybe you're afraid of the, of the answer you're going to get. Or you're just so afraid of being ran over because you've been ran over before. And you're just afraid of people seeing your hurt feelings because maybe people have taken advantage of your hurt feelings. All of that can have that. It really all goes hand in hand. So you have to understand that there's a lot of space in between you being aggressive and assertive. It's not either or. Well, no, that just doesn't make sense. That's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of space between being a pushover and aggressive. And right in the middle is being assertive. There we go. Yes, let me repeat that. There is a lot of space between being a super nice girl that's super um, nice, accommodating, and just being, you know, a pushover or a doormat. There's a lot of space between that and being aggressive. You don't have to be either or. You don't have to be, okay, you know where Mr. Nice Girl, I'm finna be an aggressive ass bitch. No, it's not that. I'm finna show them who they think they got. They got me messed up. No, it's not that. Right in the middle is assertiveness. That's what I'm trying to say. So, be assertive. That is like, to me, just the ultimate feeling of 
my healing is working. My reparenting has worked. I am my highest self. I am goddess-like because I can stand up for myself. I can um, speak up for myself. But I can do it in a way that's not disrespectful and mean to others. I can do it in a way that gets my point across. You know, it's like almost like gliding to me. A servant is just almost like, I don't know. It's just a good feeling. So work to get there. You can do it. I promise you, you can. And you'll be glad you did. So, yeah. That's all I got for this podcast episode. Um... I talked about this first on my Patreon. Check that out. I know I keep saying that. I, it's not that. I promise you. I don't have to explain myself. But I feel like I want to. And so. <laughs> it's not that I'm trying to promote. Oh yeah. Get a. get a um, You know. Be, become a patron. And pay monthly for bonus content. I'm really sometimes forgetting that I've already mentioned it. And when I mention it. In, in, in the middle of me mentioning it. Like I said that already. And I stopped myself. <laughs> I'm like, I said that already. Like, stop it. I have to say it again. I don't like to, because I don't like that where people just constantly trying to, like, say something, say something, say something. That is not my angle. I literally have ADHD, and I be forgetting that I already said that, and then to come out of my mouth again, it's on my head, and I say it again. No. I didn't mean to say that again. So. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, y'all. <laughs> I didn't mention that I do one-on-one coaching. Um, what's today? Today's the 23rd. I would say for one-on-one coaching, it is best to join at the beginning of the month because you are charged the first of every month, so, no matter when you join. So don't join now and be real with you. Don't, cause don't join now, but keep in mind, maybe set an alarm clock if you want coaching, set it so that you can do the first of the month or sometime or first week of the month, sometime towards the beginning of the month. So that you're not, you know, charged back to back. But I do do one-on-one mindset and intuitive coaching. Um, it's either phone call, which right now, actually, I got to update my time. I forgot now. I'll get off late. So I'm going to have to, because I'm working and not a fast. So I got to go in there and update my time. But yeah. So in this case, it would be uh, weekends if I'm available or morning, like between 9 and 10 Central Standard Time, if you want a coaching call, because they're hour long. So 9 to 10 Standard Time. But, um, oh, and I do coaching through the Messenger on there, on the Patreon, to where I'm like, you know, we're messaging and chatting, texting back and forth, and it's like $30 a month. And yeah. So go in there, check it out. I do coaching as well. But other than that, that's all I got for this podcast episode, girlfriends. Until the next one. Peace out.